I know I said I was going to swap from Awesome WM, but there's one last thing I want to do. So we all know that if you want a fairly keyboard-driven input method, a tiling window manager is a great way to get that. It provides an easy means to easily shift your focus between windows, easily move windows around, maybe full screen windows. Maybe if you have a window manager that supports different layouts, there's going to be a way to swap those layouts. But what if we shifted that paradigm upside down? Now, what if instead of using a keyboard, we instead used a mouse? Now, I don't mean using a mouse like shifting your folks around by moving the cursor to that window or having title bars to click on full screen. I mean replacing the buttons we press on our keyboard onto a mouse. Now, you might be saying, well, how would you have a mouse that has enough buttons that have something actually functional? Well, what you do is you buy an MMO mouse. This is the Logitech G600. I've been planning to do a video on it for quite a while. I may have uploaded the video. I may not have. I'm not really sure. Either way, it is a really good MMO mouse. It works really well on Linux. I very much recommend it. It's also really, really cheap. So besides the buttons we actually need, so we need a left and a right click. That's pretty essential for most applications out there. We can't rebind the up and down scroll. So what we are left with is 12 buttons on the side. We have these two buttons on the top here. The middle mouse actually has a left and a right click. And we actually also have a third primary mouse button. This isn't bound to anything by default, and we can use it for whatever we want. And all of that you saw me demonstrating at the start was actually being done on this mouse itself. I've actually already set up the bindings, but we're going to go through the process of how we actually got here. Not the reason for why I'm insane enough to try this, but how you might do this if you want to do it yourself. Now, if you've been using a Tyler for a while, you probably realize it has a lot of bindings. Maybe you have 30, maybe you have 50, maybe you have 100, and that's without even including the bindings that you added yourself. So we don't have that many buttons, and there is no way that we can cram everything onto this mouse. So what we need to do is decide on what is actually important. What do we use? What do we need? And what can we just completely ignore? There is sort of a cop-out solution for this, having buttons on your desktop. But we're going to avoid doing that and just use only what we can do on our mouse. So the most important thing is having a way to open a program. In my case, that is bound to Super D. And in my case, most applications don't have a toolbar, so we need Super Shift Q to quit an application. Full screening being on Super F and maximizing on Super R are both nice things to have, but are sort of just luxuries and not required. If I desperately needed that and I wanted to make it slightly easier, Awesome does support header bars on applications that has a minimize, a full screen, and a close, like you'd see on Windows or most other tilers out there. I don't really need it though, so we're just going to ignore it for now. When it comes to focusing between windows, it is nice to be able to go and say, I want to go to this window and just press a button. If we desperately can't fit that, this can be removed in favor of just moving the mouse. I'd prefer to just have it on the mouse itself though. And that is bound to super and then one of the Vim directions, so H, J, K, and L. We definitely need a way to move a window though. That, if I wanted to do it with my mouse, is bound to super and then drag. I guess I could have a separate super binding just to do that. And in some cases that actually would be a little bit more effective and give us a bit more space to work with. But if I'm not going to do that, it is bound to super shift and then one of the Vim directions. Now, Awesome does support multiple desktops, in my case being nine. But having a super one, super two, all the way up to super nine, that is a lot of keys that I don't really have to spare. There is one way I could avoid that. I can use super right and super left to cycle through the desktops instead. I think that might be perfectly fine. Not great, but fine. Now, when it comes to moving windows between desktops, normally I would use Super Shift and then whatever desktop I want to go to. So let's say we want to take this one over to desktop two. Unlike moving my focus between desktops, I don't think there is an easy way, at least built into Awesome, where I can go and move it to the following tag. There's probably a way to do this, 
but do I actually need to be able to move my windows between desktops, or is that just a luxury? Can I just open things where they need to be and then leave them there? I think for the sake of this experiment, it's fine to be doing that. It's not super efficient, and it's going to make my sort of layout really messy, but I'm also doing this on a mouse, so I don't expect it to be great. If I desperately wanted this, I could go and limit the number of desktops I have, maybe down to three or four, and that would make it a lot more easier to manage by just doing, you know, numbered jumps. But I think that we're just going to avoid that for now, and if I have room, I'll bring it back. Now, swapping layouts is one thing I demonstrated earlier, but looking back on it, I don't think I really need that. So that is bound to super tab to go forward and then super shift tab to go backwards. But I don't really shift my layouts that often. Maybe like sometimes on my second screen, but for the most part, I have my master node on the left hand side or the right hand side, depending on which screen I'm using. And then everything else just left as it is. On that note, using Super Tab and Super Shift Tab basically allows me to jump my cursor between the different monitors. This isn't super essential, but it is great for games that are locked into full screen and need some way to access my other monitors. Now, I also have multiple monitors and don't plan to get rid of them. So I need a way to move a window from one monitor over to another. Now, like what I mentioned before with moving monitors around this layout, if I hold down the mod key and then drag the window around, it does let me do that. But if that's not going to work, I need a separate key and that will be bound to mod S. What you're going to need is probably going to be a bit different from what I need, but I have an idea of how I want stuff bound, so now we need to work out if modifiers actually work. This was my first thought. If I had a super key bound of the mouse, I had a shift key, and then I had all of the vim keys and things like that bound as separate keys, I could go and press multiple keys at once on the mouse, and everything would just work the way I'd expect it to work. First problem, uh, I can only press one button at once. That's pretty much to be expected. You're not really supposed to do something like this on a mouse. Second problem is the way that single bound modifier keys work on my mouse. This might be an artifact of the drivers not supporting something stupid like this or this running through Linux or something like that. But right now I've got an XEV window open and if I press Super L on my keyboard, it says Super L was pressed exactly like it should. If I press button one on my mouse, which is bound to the exact same button, this happens. So Shift L, Control R, Meta R, and then Super R, but no Super L. All of the other keys, except the one I want. Another slight driver issue is this mouse does support multiple profiles. I actually have three of them. The Profile 0 is the one that I normally use. That's the one for like MMOs and stuff. The 1 and 2 is what I've been using for this testing. Now, there is a function to cycle the profile up and down. And it works. Sometimes. Sometimes it decides, you know what? I'm just gonna stop working. Uh, why? I don't know. So right now, if I cycle up on that profile, it works. It's swapped over to the red profile, which is profile one. But I couldn't go and cycle down. And then on profile one, if I have cycle down set, sometimes it just ignores the fact that I've changed the binding. I don't know if that's a limitation with the amount of memory on the device or the drivers not updating or something or this being a third party application to modify the drivers. But either way, we can't rely on multiple profiles. If we could, that'd make this really easy. I'd have another 17 keys to work with and no problems whatsoever. So with the limits I have, I can't have single modifier bindings. That might not be the case with your mouse. I have one profile to work with, so I have 17 keys to use. And I still somehow managed to get it to the point where it's actually usable. It's not good, but it's usable. So we'll start with the button grid array. G9 and G11 are full screen and maximized respectively. I know I said I didn't necessarily need them, but I didn't have anything that I felt was going to fit in their place. So I kept them there and... It is what it is. Now, as for G15 and G17, 
G15 is going to open up my application launcher. In this case, it is D menu. D menu is not exactly great for this. I guess I could go and get like a on-screen keyboard and then type with my mouse, but you'd probably want to use something that is a graphical solution instead. And then G17 will quit an application. You might have noticed the shape the leftover keys are in. 10, 12, 13, 14, and then 16, 18, 19, and 20. These are basically two blocks of WASD or arrow keys. So for these ones, the first one at the top basically is for moving my focus between windows. The one on the bottom is for shifting the windows around. On left and right middle mouse click, this is going to move my cursor between the monitors. This isn't super important for general desktop use, but as I mentioned earlier, it's incredibly useful for full screen games. On these two center buttons here, the top one is going to take me to the next desktop on the right, and the bottom is going to take me to the next one on the left. I feel like if I'm using a tiler, making use of these extra desktops is going to be incredibly useful, not just in a single monitor setup, but even with three like I use. And then finally, on the third primary mouse button, this is going to move a window from one monitor to another. Now, the ultimate question is, should you use this? Well, no, no, you shouldn't. A tiling window manager is made to be used on a keyboard. There is too many bindings to fit onto a mouse. But if you're stupid and you want to try to use it with a mouse, you know, like I did, it can be done. It's not the best tiling window manager experience. It's not even a good tiling window manager experience, but it can certainly be made better, assuming you have profiles that work and you're happy to use header bars. But hey, if you want to try it out for yourself, let me know how it goes in the comment section down below. Maybe you're going to start using it as your main interaction method. You probably won't, but maybe you will. And I would love to know. So if you like this video, so if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to something, Barrow Pay, linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.